Now, ever since I got the M4 Mac Mini, one of the first things I wonder is, is there anything else that competes with this thing in terms of offering the same form factor, performance, and price point? Well, after searching for a few weeks, I really don't think there's any other thing quite like the M4 Mac Mini. SOCs from AMD, Intel, and Qualcomm haven't really come out yet to really compete with this thing in terms of the form factor, performance, and price. But what about a standard PC? In fact, recently I built a six $1,600 4K mini gaming PC powered by an Intel 14600K processor as well as the RTX 4070 Ti Super. So we're actually going to see how th this custom-made PC compares against my M4 Mac Mini as well as my M4 Pro Mac Mini to determine which one has the fastest CPU, GPU, which one is better for video editing and encoding, and of course gaming. To ultimately determine which one is the best in terms of general performance as well as overall value. Now first let's go over the core specifications of our Mac Minis. Now the base M4 chip Mac Mini has a 10 core CPU, 10 core GPU, 16 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of SSD storage for $599. Our M4 Pro is also the base model. It has a 12 core CPU, 16 core GPU, 24 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabyte SSD drive for $1399. On top of that, we also have Thunderbolt 5 ports at the back of the M4 Pro, which is only Thunderbolt 4 certified on the standard M4 Mac Mini. Now let's talk about the PC that we have. It's based off of the Intel 14600K processor. That's 14 core CPU with 20 threads, six performance cores and eight efficiency cores. It can turbo up to 5.3 gigahertz. This CPU is about a year old now, so the prices have come down and we got it for about $230. Now since we're building a compact PC, we need a low profile CPU cooler. The 14600K is quite a hot processor, especially when it's at full boost. So I went with a Noctua NH-L9i, which hopefully will keep the thermals in check as well as be pretty quiet at the same time and not bad for $45. In terms of the motherboard, we're going to be using an ITX form factor. So we got the Asus ROG Strix B760i gaming Wi-Fi board. This board has most of the modern amenities, including PCI 5, USB 3.2, supports DDR5 at 7600 mega transfers per second, and built in wireless Bluetooth as well as 802.11ax Wi-Fi. In terms of RAM and storage, while well, we're using 32 gigabytes of DDR5 from Crucial, clocked in at 6,000 mega transfers per second. It's cheap at $80. In terms of the SSD, we're using a one terabyte ADATA M.2 PCIe Gen 4 drive, pretty affordable at $80 as well. Furthermore, in terms of the GPU, we went a little high end over here since we actually want to do some 4K 60 FPS gaming with ray tracing on. So we got a 4070 Ti Super from Asus. I actually got this used off of Amazon for around $730. Moving forward, we're going to need an SFX power supply. So I went with a Cooler Master V850. It's gold, 80 plus certified. Fully modular, has a 12 volt high power connection for PCI 5.0. And at 850 watts, this should actually be powerful enough to potentially even upgrade to a 4080 later down the road if we need to. Last but not least is our case, the Fractal Design Ridge in white. Now this utilizes a split design where one side of the case houses your ITX motherboard as well as power supply. The other side houses your GPU up to 335 millimeters. That's more than long enough for what we need. Now this case isn't exactly what I call small. The dimensions are 35.5 by 9.5 by 37.5 centimeters. That means you, in the volume of this case, you could probably fit like 15 Mac minis potentially. But to be fair, I think pretty much every ITX case is gonna look like a giant to the Mac mini and you can never really compete with it from a size and packaging perspective. Now the grand total for all of our parts and you can find a price breakdown in the description down below alongside our affiliate links. But the total sum for everything we've talked about is about 1580, not including taxes or a Windows 11 key. Now I do have to mention if you didn't go down the ITX route and go with a standard case, you could probably save two to three hundred dollars on top of this price. And if you don't care about 4K gaming with high frame rates, you can probably get an RTX 4060 and save another three hundred dollars. So you could probably get a PC for around 
1000 to $800 that will be pretty comparable to the performance that you're going to get with the M4 Mac Mini. But let's actually find out what the performance of this PC is in comparison with our Mac Minis. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is our CPU benchmark results using Cinebench. Now at stock frequencies, our 14600K scored about 1166 on multi-core processing and 114 points on a single core processing. On our standard M4 chip on our Mac Mini, we got around 973 points in terms of the multi-core performance and 174 in terms of single core. On our M4 Pro chip, we got 1400 points on our multi-core and about 173 single core. In terms of Geekbench, using their standard CPU benchmark, we're getting about 17,000 on the multi-core and 2,700 on our single core on the Intel chip. On the M4 base model Mac Mini, we're getting around 15,000 points and 3,800 points multi-core and single core respectively. And the M4 Pro is the fastest at 20,000 points multi-core and 3,600 points single core. Next, let's take a look at our SSD performance. The M4 has a slower 256 gigabyte SSD. It runs about 3,000 and 2,000 megabytes a second read and write respectively. The M4 Pro with the 512 gigabyte faster SSD runs at 5,800 and 4,400 megabytes a second read and write respectively. And our ADATA one terabyte SSD drive uh, runs around 5,000 and 5,700 megabytes a second read and write respectively using AS SSD, which is very similar to Amorphous Dismark on Mac OS. Now next, I'm going to do a real world encoding test using Handbrake. I'm going to take four raw clips out of my camera and encode them using the fast HEVC H.265 codec in Handbrake and the fastest runtime was actually with our custom built Intel system at 19 minutes and 39 seconds. The second was our M4 Pro chip which did it in 19 minutes and 50 seconds and the slowest was the standard M4 chip which took about 26 minutes and 20 seconds. After that I went into Premiere Pro and using the exact same 10 minute 4K 60 FPS project we exported our sequence using the YouTube 4K60 H.264 preset in Premiere Pro and the total runtime on our custom build PC was only 3 minutes and 39 seconds versus on the M4 Pro the exact same situation took 9 minutes 43 seconds and the standard M4 chip took about 10 minutes and 9 seconds to export that sequence. Now granted, this sequence does have a lot of LUTs and video effects applied, so I actually want to see how Final Cut performed using the exact same project. I basically converted my Premiere project to an XML file using DaVinci Resolve so Final Cut could read it. And with similar export settings to Premiere Pro, we did get a slightly faster result. The export time ran at 9 minutes, 2 seconds on the M4. Pro and the M4 chip did it in 9 minutes and 41 seconds. But these export times are nowhere near as good as what we encountered in Premiere Pro with our custom built PC, mainly due to the fact that Premiere Pro is utilizing all those CUDA cores we have on our 4070 Ti. In fact, I think we have 7,680 and over 12 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory. So, in terms of the GPU horsepower, it's really no contest. And for fun, just to further illustrate that point, let's get into our GPU benchmarks uh, using uh, Valley at 4K Ultra Details. This is obviously uh, not utilizing a metal on the Apple side, so it's really not optimized, but let's just see how a cross-platform benchmark like this performs on all these machines. And our M4 standard base model got around 21 average frames per second. The M4 Pro got 37 average frames per second. And our 4070 Ti Super got around 159.4 average frames per second in the exact same settings. Granted, obviously the NVIDIA driver support and hardware is much better optimized on a benchmark like this, even though we're running at OpenGL, which is not going to give us as fast speeds as DirectX 11.
Now, next, we're going to run another synthetic benchmark, but inside a real game. Rise of the Tomb Raider, which is cross-platform, runs natively on Mac OS. And at 1080p with the same detail settings, we're getting around 77 average frames per second on the M4, 133 on the M4 Pro, and 243.2 average frames per second on our 4070 Ti. After that, we're going to take a look at some of our real-world benchmark results, and we're measuring FPS using the metal HUD overlay in Mac OS, which is a developer option. And we're measuring FPS using MSI Afterburner on the PC side. And uh, we did not overclock the 4070 Ti. It's completely bone stock out of the box. Now one supported game on Mac OS, which is hard to run, is Everspace 2. And at 1080p, it only ran about 30 to 40 FPS on the M4 and about 40 to 55 FPS on the M4 Pro. Not that great, especially at that lower resolution. And in the exact same resolution and quality settings, we're getting around a uh, high or average frames per second about 187 and a low about 128 on our 4070 Ti. Obviously the game is super optimized and we have good driver support. CS2, on the other hand, runs great on Mac OS. Even on the M4 chip, we get around 120 frames per second at times and a low of 90 1080p medium detail settings. The exact same settings, we're getting 160 to 120 FPS on the M4 Pro. But at this resolution, detail settings, we're getting well over 300 frames per second on our 4070 Ti. If you're a super competitive gamer using like a 360 hertz monitor or something like that, this will be uh, really excellent. 1% low was uh, still around 130 frames per second on our PC. Metro Exodus, which is a native Mac OS game as well, runs at 60 to 75 FPS on the M4, 100 to 170 on the M4 Pro, and on the 4070 Ti same exact 1080p detail settings and everything we get around 217 frames per second on average and a low of 154. Switching over to kind of a modern classic gaming title Dirt 4 at 1080p high detail settings we're getting around 57 to 75 fps on the m4 about 120 to 90 fps on the m4 pro and uh about 277 average frames per second on our 4070 Ti with a low of 136. Now next, using a Metal 3 translation tool crossover 24, which allows us to play Windows 11 Steam games, we tested out one game that's super easy to run and one game that's hard to run. The easy game is Redout, a anti-gravity game. This is at 1080p high details. We're getting 80 to 90 FPS on the M4, the M4 Pro got about 100 to 150 average frames per second and the exact same scenario on our PC with the 4070 Ti. We got well over 300 frames per second and a low of over 200. The game that's hard to run is obviously Cyberpunk 2077. 1080p medium detail settings, the M4 and this is again being translated so this is not optimized for Metal 3 or anything like that but you still get 30 to 40 FPS which is definitely playable. M4 Pro hovered around 50 fps which is definitely pretty good and on our gaming system again ray tracing off dlss off 1080p medium detail settings 141 average frames per second and 97 minimum one percent lows now, as you saw from the gaming results, in pretty much every circumstance you can think of, pretty much no integrated GPU could ever compete with a dedicated graphics card like the 4070 Ti. Sure, the price point of the 4070 Ti at being around $750 to $800 is more expensive than the base Mac Mini, but keep in mind that if you actually want to do true 4K 60fps gaming and don't want to get a 4080 or 4090, which costs $1,000 to $2,000, at around the $800 mark, the 4070 Ti is probably a more relatively affordable price point for high resolution, high FPS ray tracing gaming. Now, as far as our 14600K processor goes, it's definitely faster than the base model M4 chip, which is nice to see. Not quite as fast as the M4 Pro, but not off by a huge margin. In fact, most of our real world comparison when we're actually taking a look at video encoding times and uh, applications that utilize a lot of multi-core uh, capabilities, the 14600K is slightly faster. 
Now, as far as machine learning or AI capabilities are concerned, the Raptor Lake series of processors aren't really optimized for that. They were designed more than two years ago now with the 13th and 14th generation Intel chips. And uh, really, we don't have the same dedicated number of compute units designed for machine learning processes like what we find on the M4 chip. So you probably want to go to the Intel ultra series of chips that have those enhancements for AI development. Uh, but for general day-to-day -day computing needs, the 14600K being about a year old now has definitely come down in price. And for around the $200 mark, it's probably one of the best dedicated CPUs that you can get right now. Now, as far as overall value goes, the base model M4 Mac mini is pretty tough to beat. It's powerful enough for pretty much most people's day-to-day -day needs, whether you're uh, doing some light gaming, video editing, content creation, or really anything in between. It's really quite a capable little system. And with the Thunderbolt interface, you can expand it easily externally, no problem. And even though internally, there's pretty much no user upgradable options, unlike a custom made PC, it's still a awesome little package that's super powerful and excellent for under the $600 mark. If we were to make a custom built PC that directly competes against the performance of an M4 Mac mini, we We'd probably spend $800 to $1,000 easily, not have the same form factor, yes, have the expandability options for hardware upgrades, as well as it'd be better for uh, GPU-based applications with a dedicated graphics card, so better video rendering capabilities as well as better gaming capabilities. But again, it's still going to be more expensive and not at the same form factor. But really on that, guys, that's really it. Definitely love to know what you guys think of this comparison video. Would you go for a custom-made PC? over a M4 Mac Mini. In fact, if you have an older custom-made gaming PC, would you upgrade to a M4 Pro or M4 Mac Mini uh, just for the sake that it is technically faster and it's gonna make your overall desktop setup a lot more cleaner? Definitely a fan of that. If you have any specific questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Please make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't done so. And if you go through any of our affiliate links down in the description down below, it helps us grow the channel, makes videos possible like this. We don't have any sponsors as you saw, and we really appreciate you guys watching and supporting the channel. We'll see you real soon in the next one and take care. Bye-bye.